Two communities struck by unimaginable grief now dealing with more loss. A father whose six-year-old daughter was killed in the Sandy Hook massacre, becoming the latest to die in an apparent suicide. Also this week, two Parkland High School survivors died in apparent suicides. What is prompting this? Joining us to discuss it is John Draper. He's the director of the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, and he has some very important tips and information for us. John, um, it's nice to see you again. You've helped us through this topic before uh, here on New Day. And I just find it so soul crushing to have to report on this because uh, the ripple effect after a school shooting, you know, uh, we now know that the pain, of course, stays with people. And so months later, a year later, seven years later in the Sandy Hook case, this is happening. How do you explain it? Well, and thank you for inviting me on for this important subject matter, Allison. I mean, really, what we're talking about is traumatic loss. And traumatic loss is not something that just goes away. It really is something that we have to pay attention to and ask each other for years afterwards, how are you doing? You know, the, the question that, that you're asking this morning about, you know, why did this happen and, and what more can we do about it? Those are the questions that relentlessly hammer at people who have suffered traumatic losses. What, what more could I have done? And why did this happen? And maybe even, why not me? And these are, these are cruel questions that people will continue to ask themselves. And, and, and there's, there's no good answers for them. But the only answer that we can provide is, you don't have to go through this alone. Well, yeah, I think that that's a really important message. But you know, the old adage of time heals all wounds, no, it doesn't. You know, sometimes you're still in searing pain long after the event. And what are you supposed to do about that? For people who are still in pain, and for pe if we know people in crisis, what's the answer? Well, you make a very good point, Allison. Really, most people who've gone through traumatic situations actually do get better. But what that means is that those people who are not getting better and who see others moving on um, and, and, and not asking or expecting that they are going through anything now, they begin to form more, feel more alone and, and, and feel unsupported and feel like they don't have permission to talk about it. So that's why it's very important to have special resources for people that are available. And we, we certainly provide those. We have not only the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, but the National Disaster Distress Helpline, which is uh, provided for people who've gone through human-made as well as natural disasters and are still emotionally affected years afterwards. That's really valuable. You know, we, um, we've talked, John, you and I before, about the best way to talk about this on TV. Because for a long time, we avoided the subject of suicide. I mean, right. studiously avoided it because we were afraid of copycat cases. But it turns out that's right. not the right answer either because that creates a stigma. So we need to talk about it, but we need to do it obviously in a productive, healthful way. And so what is that? Well, I, I think a very productive thing is I, what, what makes it hard, I think, for a number of people and what, what causes what we, what we would say a, a contagion of some kind is when people see individuals modeling how to react to circumstances where they feel hopeless and helpless and do so self-destructively. What we really need to see more of and give more contact for people is, is our peers who have gone through these situations, essentially who are who found ways to cope through seemingly the impossible and, and learn from them. What is it that got you through this? And those models, and, and those are primarily what's happening out there is most people are getting through, but how, how are they getting through it? What, what, what helps them? So I, it, from our standpoint, and one of the things that we're absolutely committed to as an organization is to establish uh, a, a way in which, in this specific case, uh, survivors of school shootings get additional supports and actually contact with each other so they, they can support one another. That's really valuable because while the pain doesn't completely go away, you can turn a corner and you can right. have some good days and you can have some longer than good days. And so I think that people need to realize that the pain doesn't stay as excruciating forever. And that's what we need to talk about. Yes, but here's the other thing, Allison, is that, that people shouldn't have to go through this alone. 
And, I, and it's hard to get through those days when you feel like you have to do it all by yourself. We know that, uh, that any measure of pain is more tolerable if we're sharing it with somebody else. There's all sorts of research to indicate that. So the more people feel empathy and understanding and connection with others, the less likely they are to feel that pain. We, it actually registers in the brain that way. So the more we can provide contact and assistance for individuals who are going through these situations who feel left behind and say, we haven't forgotten about you, the more we're going to be able to help people get through it. That's a great message, John. John Draper, thank you very much for giving us the language to help people and for giving us the actual hotline. If anyone out there is thinking about suicide or if you're worried about a friend or a loved one, there is help. Please call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. It is 1-800-273-TALK or 8255. This is free, confidential. It's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And please keep the families of the Sandy Hook uh, victims as well as the Parkland survivors in your thoughts today.